Hi everyone, it's Zoe. So I just want to kind of start this video and just say thank you for all the support on my college decision reactions video. It's so incredibly cool to have so many people following along on my college journey. Also, I wanted to say with all the free time that I have during quarantine, I plan on producing a lot of college content. So, you know, let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see from me. Anyways, this video is going to be covering some of the reasons that I think I got into the schools I was accepted to, including MIT, Princeton, Penn, Brown, Johns Hopkins, Berkeley, USC, and many more. Um, if you'd like to see my college decision reactions video, I attached the link in the description below, so go check it out. This video is just kind of going to focus on my stats, extracurriculars, classes, that kind of stuff, just to give a better picture. And then I think I'm going to do a follow-up video talking about essays and maybe giving some tips to juniors and underclassmen on the college application process. Before we totally get started, I just have a couple of disclaimers I'd like to add at the beginning of the video. One, I'm not trying to like flex or brag about my stats or my extracurriculars by posting this video. I'm really just trying to help you all get a better understanding of me as an applicant and what may have helped me get accepted. Um, second, kind of stats don't actually play that big of a role in the college admissions process. They're really just used as kind of a baseline qualifier to see if you can academically handle the school. Stats don't get you into a school even if you have a perfect SAT score or a perfect GPA. The only thing they can really do is take you out of that first initial round of qualification if your stats are just way below the average for a school. I guess what I'm trying to say here is you don't need a perfect SAT score to get into Stanford or Harvard or Princeton or MIT or whatever. Um, you really just need to aim for that 25th through 75th percentile for a school and then you'll be totally good. Third, I'm not an admissions officer, so I don't know what got me into the schools I got into or what got me rejected to the schools I didn't get into, but I can certainly speculate as to why I was or wasn't admitted, so that's really what I'm trying to do here. I'm not trying to sell you on why I got into a school or why I didn't get into a school. I'm just trying to say this is what I think might have gotten me into this school. Um, and lastly, just because these things worked for me in the college admissions process doesn't mean it'll work for you. There's no one way to get accepted to any college or university. The buzzword in college admissions right now is the word holistic, and that just means that each applicant is going to be assessed on a variety of factors individually so that the admissions committee gets a complete picture of who you are as one person. You shouldn't do the same things that I did thinking it'll get you into a college because the whole process varies from person to person and is super subjective in general. So what I'll be covering in this video is by no means a roadmap to get accepted to a top school. It's basically just to shine a little bit of light on what I submitted to colleges and what may have helped me get accepted. Let's jump right into it then. The first thing I'm going to start out with is because it was so highly requested in the comments was people asking to hear my stats. 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 On the ACT, I got a 36 out of 36. In terms of the breakdown, it was a 36 in science, math, and English, and a 35 in reading. And then I got an 11 on the writing section for my essay. I also took the SAT and I got a 1570 out of 1600. In terms of that breakdown, I got a 780 on the English reading and writing section, and then a 790 on math. So I'm an embarrassment to my family. <laughs> so those were kind of my standardized tests. I also submitted either two or three subject tests to some of my colleges, depending on what their requirements were. So I'll list all three for those um, for you guys. On math two, I got an 800. On literature, I got a 700. And on physics, I got a 670. Not super proud of that score. Don't like to talk about it, just because I didn't really study for any of my subject tests. So I didn't do so hot on them. A little below average for a lot of my schools, especially MIT. Just to provide some context about my high school, I attend a rural public high school in Haley, Idaho. We have just under a thousand students at our school, so my class has about 250. Um, in terms of my ranking, I was one out of 250. I had a 4.48 weighted GPA and a 4.0 unweighted GPA. And just kind of a note about that, I see people all the time with like 4.8 and 4.9 GPAs. My school kind of makes it so that you can't get over a 4.5 GPA. Um, so we have a little bit of like GPA deflation there relative to other schools. Once again, I was in range for GPA and scores for all of my schools. So that's really all I was shooting for. In terms of the classes I took in high school, I have my little transcript here. So I ended up taking 16 AP classes in high school. 
Um, my school doesn't allow you to take any your freshman year, so I didn't take any. Sophomore year, they're severely restricted as to what you can and can't take. So I took three APs. My junior year, I took seven, and my senior year, I'm taking, or I did take until school got canceled for the rest of the year, six APs. So I have my transcript here. I'm just gonna read out all the classes I took in high school. We don't have a lot of honors and dual credit options, so like college level classes at my school. So I just took the most rigorous course load that my high school offered. So yeah, my freshman year, I took honors ninth English and I got A's. I took pre-calculus, which was dual credit. So I got college credit at um, the College of Southern Idaho and I got two A's. Then I took biology, which um, normally take as a sophomore at my school and I got A pluses both semesters. Then I took health online. I took two semesters of debate and got A's. Um, I took another PE class online and got an A. I took Spanish level four and got A's. I took computer applications online and got an A. I took um, Western Hemisphere Geography and got an A online. And then I took two semesters of world history and got A pluses in both of those. So that was my freshman year. I had 16 and a half credits. I had a few from the summer before and from middle school. Sophomore year, I took 15 and a half credits. I took honors 10 English and got A's both semesters. I took AP Calculus AB and got A's both semesters. I took chemistry both semesters and got A's. I took AP US History both semesters and got A's. I took debate both semesters and got A pluses. I took AP Psychology and got an A and an A plus. And then I took Spanish level five and got two A's. And then junior year, I took seven APs. I took AP English Language and Composition and got A's. I took AP Calculus BC and got an A and an A plus. I took AP Environmental Science and got an A plus and an A. I took AP Physics One and got A plus and an A. I took AP Comparative Government and got two A pluses. I took AP Macroeconomics and got an A plus. I took AP Microeconomics and got an A plus. Then I took two semesters of debate and got A pluses. So that's my junior year schedule. And then senior year, I was taking AP English Lit and I got an A, AP Statistics and I got an A+, AP Physics 2 and I got an A, AP US Government and Politics, I got an A+, AP Studio Art, I got an A+, and AP Human Geography and I got an A+. So that was my senior year schedule. As far as AP scores go, on the 10 AP exams I had taken when I applied to colleges, so all the stuff I took sophomore and junior year, I got um, of the 10, I got fives on nine of the exams, and then on AP Physics 1, I got a three. Not my proudest moment, didn't study as hard as I should have. So I submitted, I think the Common App lets you submit like eight AP exam scores, so I submitted eight fives. I think I left out the three on AP Physics and I think AP Psychology. So just kind of in terms of courses, I made a note here, which is that when you're applying to colleges, you should definitely show that you took the most rigorous course load or close to it that your high school offered and that you excelled taking challenging courses. But really like if your school doesn't offer that many APs or honors classes, that's totally fine. Colleges are completely understanding of that. Colleges look at your classes and what kind of things you pursued in high school within the context of where you came from and your background. So as long as you're maximizing what's available to you, you're totally fine in the college application process. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about extracurriculars. So I had three very important extracurriculars that I really wanted to make sure that I got totally across on my college applications, just because they were the most important to me and I felt like they really aligned with my values the best. So my three most important ones were the speech and debate team, which I did for four years of high school. And I was the speech captain my junior year and the team captain my senior year. Um, I did varsity all four years and I love speech and debate. So that was one of my biggest activities. Um, another one, I helped with a democratic political campaign the summer before my junior and senior year. So I've worked for them for two years. So I helped get three Democratic women elected to office in Idaho, which is a super conservative state. So that was very important to me and something that I talked more about in my essays um, and a lot of my supplementals for different schools. So that was another thing that was really important to me. Then the third and the most important activity in my college applications process was STEAM ON. So I founded an equitable education nonprofit the spring of my junior year. So what STEAM ON does is we provide tutoring and mentorship to underserved and underrepresented students. And that was super important to me. I'm really passionate about educational access and equity in educational access. So that was something I talked a lot about in my essays 
and in my interviews as well when I had the opportunity to interview for a school. Just in terms of extracurriculars and playing a role in the college application process, I think extra extracurriculars, that's such a hard word to say, are super important just because they really showcase what you're passionate about. Um, I have my little common application spreadsheet out here. So besides um, Steam On, Speech and Debate, and the um, political campaign I worked on, the other stuff I put on my common act common app activities list, which gives you 10 slots. I used all 10 were in order. Number three, next generation politics. So I was the chapter president and co-founder and the state director of the Next Generation Politics Women's Caucus. Next Generation Politics is basically an organization that aims to foster civic discourse among people on different um, like political ideologies. So what we do is we bring together people on different sides of the aisle and help them find common ground on hot button issues. So I co-founded and lead that club. I co-founded it my sophomore year, and then I've been the president um, for my senior year. My fourth one was related to the campaign, so I held a fellowship with our local democratic organization for two years. So what I kind of did for them was I trained volunteers on how to walk doors and survey um, our people in our community. I helped nonprofit leaders understand like these technologies that help you get data about um, where people stand on issues. And I helped with a lot of strategy during the campaign process. My fifth was Model United Nations. So I um, won a couple awards. I didn't put it in the honor section of my Common App because I didn't have room but I won kind of minor regional awards. I got best position paper my junior and senior year at a regional conference. I got best delegate my senior year at the same conference. My sixth was Girls on the Run. So I was a board member for our local Girls on the Run organization and a coach at the middle school for three years, a board member for four. I talked about kind of teaching middle schoolers to be happy and healthy and you know self-confident and all that good stuff. My seventh activity that I talked about was the tennis team. So I played JV my freshman and sophomore year and varsity my junior senior year. We competed statewide at weekend tournaments and twice weekly during the regular season matches. We trained like 10 hours a week with the varsity team, so I put that. My eighth slot was being a Hebrew tutor for our Jewish community and I was also self-employed for part of that time. So I tutored students and prepared them for their bar and bat mitzvahs for three years. And that was super cool. I really enjoyed that process. On my ninth, I talked about being a part of the Student Conservation Council. We have a local land trust and they have a board of students who help to protect and preserve about 20,000 acres of community preserves. So we organized seed bombings. We held a student film festival about nature. We created an audio tour for a new preserve and we attended monthly board meetings. And then my last one was National Honor Society. So I was elected as the president of my class for junior and senior year for National Honor Society. Society. Basically what I had to do is help with our like induction ceremony every spring. I had to help locate community service opportunities for our NHS members and complete like 40 plus service hours a year. Just as a note, I used every Common App activity slot, but colleges definitely don't need to see that you use every single activity slot. Um, they don't really necessarily even want you to pursue 10 extracurriculars. They just wanna see breadth and depth in your activity commitments. So I don't necessarily think it's even helpful to do that many activities. I just did them because I was really passionate about them and because I enjoyed them just for the sake of doing them. So I just think showing commitment to a few things and then showing that you've also gone out of your comfort zone and experimented with different activities and extracurriculars shows breadth and depth and is very important in the extracurricular process. So you don't need to do that many activities. Don't feel pressured to, you're totally good. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is honors and awards. The common application gives you five spots for honors and awards on your application. So I used all five spots. Um, I would recommend going with your most impactful um, honors first and then, you know, go down just like with your activity section. So start with the activities that are most important to you, that you put the most time into, that you're, mo that you're the most passionate about um, with both your activities and your honors. So I went down that way. But my first honor that I listed on the common application was that I was a National Merit Semi-Finalist, and I just became a National Merit Scholar a couple weeks ago, so that's exciting. Um, I secured the bag, got the $2,500 cash award, <laughs> but yeah. The second honor that I listed was that I was a speech and debate three-time national qualifier, which is for the top 3% of speech and debate competitors within the United States. The third honor that I listed was that I was academic All-American, um, the fourth one that I listed was that I was a National AP Scholar. I forget exactly what it means, but when I Googled it, it said that only like 1% of AP testers get that award. So I was like, okay, cool, I guess I'll list it. But 
I'll put the like what it is right here. I guess the last honor that I listed was that I was a black belt in both Subakdo and Tangsudo. So I've trained martial arts ever since I was three years old, and it's something that's been really important to me throughout my whole life. I didn't really have much room for it in other parts of my application, but I just wanted to show that I was really committed to it, that I put a lot of time into it. And then the last thing is the additional information section. So in this section, I included a link to Steamon's website and I talked about like very briefly, just kind of listed them, a few other extracurriculars and honors that I received. Um, basically with the additional information section, you have 650 words to include other stuff that you couldn't find a spot for in your application and you really should use it. Um, especially if you have circumstances that might have affected another aspect of your application. Like let's say you have a low GPA your freshman year of high school because of an illness in the family or something like that. You need to use the additional information section to talk about circumstances, other extracurriculars, distinctions, honors you may have. So you have 650 words, use it. Um, I would recommend kind of going with high impact things. If you don't have like you know, if you don't have much stuff to talk about that you couldn't find a place for in other aspects of your application, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, use the additional info section. But if you have things that are important to you that you weren't able to place elsewhere, definitely use it. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any suggestions or things you'd like to see in future college content, comment them down below. And I have plenty of free time with the whole quarantine thing going on. So I'll try and make as much college content as possible, whether you guys want to see me read my essays, um, talk about, you know, tips for scholarships or interviews, anything like that. I'm happy to make videos and advice. If you have any questions you don't feel comfortable doing in a comment below, please DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Zoe Simon with three N's at the end. So Zoe and then S-I-M-O-N-N-N. -N -N. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it right there. That's probably easier. Please just let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see and I'd be happy to make them. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and turn on notifications if you'd like to see my future college content. I intend on making a lot of it just because I'm really interested in helping you all with the college application process. I think it was super rewarding for me. I was very happy with the way that things turned out. So just let me know what you'd like to see and I'll get it done. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye.